Hi guys, welcome to the High Yield Review for the Neuro Module. This review session will be divided into three different videos. Um, this is the part one, and uh, we'll be covering ophthalmology um, in this video. So let's get started. And you'll see there's a bunch of memes um, throughout these videos that I hope you enjoy. Okay, so we'll start with some fundoscopy. Make sure you know what normal eye looks like because it makes it easier to understand uh, pathology. Okay, so um, take a minute to answer these, pause the video, and then unpause when you're ready to hear the answers. Okay, so um, the first picture is what we something we see in hypertension. It already um, marks or, uh, you know, uh, points out the things that you're going to see in hypertension. For example, you're going to see some edema around the disc. You will see narrowing of the arteries, um, and we call that a copper wire appearance of the arteries. We're also going to see this AV nicking um, or arteriovenous nicking, and there will be some exudates, some blood hemorrhages, some cotton wool spots. Okay, but we look for that copper wiring and the narrowing of the arteries. Uh, our second picture is diabetes. It shows you again what are the things you see with diabetes. One of the main things you're going to see is the is angiogenesis or developmental development of new vessels, which are abnormal. So a lot of abnormal new vessels that we're going to see um, in diabetes. There are going to be some cotton wool spots, some venous uh, beatings you can see, or like dilations, some retinal hemorrhage heart exudates, some microaneurysms, but really the angiogenesis is one of the main things we see in diabetes. Okay, so moving on, and again, pause and unpause when you're ready to hear the answers. So number three is our retinal artery occlusion. I just think of, you know, artery occlusion, that means blood isn't even coming in in the first place. And that's why the, uh, the fundus on fundoscopy, the retinal looks so pale because blood isn't coming in. However, with, renal, with retinal vein occlusion, blood is coming in, but it can't get out. So you're gonna see all these, uh, you know, these tortuous veins and hyperemic, it's super red, right? And swelling of the disc, a lot of hemorrhage, um, some cotton wool spots. So hopefully that makes sense. It's an easy difference there. Okay, and again, take a minute to answer this and then unpause when you're ready. So again, this is normal. Just put it here to put it in here to trick you guys, but this is normal. But I wanted to show you normal and then show you papilledema. So look at papilledema. You have, as it says here, hyperemic discs and blurred margins. Um, this is a sign of increased intracranial pressure. Really, if someone comes in with a headache, uh, you have to look at their optic discs. You want to make sure that it's not a secondary cause of a headache, like a tumor or hemorrhage, uh, before you think about more primary causes like, um, you know, migraines or tension headaches, etc. So papilledema shows raised intracerebral uh, pressure, and these are some causes of papilledema. You can see here a bunch of different causes, but there's no loss of vision. Okay, just keep in mind, there's no loss of vision with this one. Okay, moving on to so seven and eight. Okay, so seven is wet macular degeneration. Eight is dry macular degeneration. If you see, it's really just the macular area or the fovea where we see the problem. The rest of the eye looks pretty normal, right, around the macula. So that's how you know this is a macular problem. This is what we see with age-related macular degeneration, um, and it can be wet or dry. Uh, if it's wet, it's more of a neovascularization, something we also see in diabetes, right, the new angiogenesis, the new vessels. But here we see uh, neovascularization specifically in the macular region. We see bleeding. Uh, and you can read through these. And then you have the dry macular re uh, degeneration with the drus and the macular thinning. Okay, moving on to some eye infections. So pause and then unpause when you're ready. So here we go. A neonate starts two to five days after vaginal delivery. 
um, hyperacute, hyperpurulent yellow green discharge. So lots and lots of discharge uh, or pus from the eyes. That's Neisseria gonorrhea. It's a gram negative diplococci or coffee bean shape. Do transmission through eye, hand, eye, or flies. That's your track. That's your chlamydia track serotype, which are A, B, C. Um, and chlamydia is gram negative, gene sustain is what we use to identify it, usually in younger patients, and this is seen in the upper eyelids. I do want to compare this with number three. This is acquired from genital infections, swimming pools, and hot tubs. This is your trick. This is the chlamydia trick, and serotypes are D through K. Um, it's almost like a D blank blank K, right? So you know it's acquired mostly through genital infections and K because that's a genitalia. Okay, so you, this is again, gram, it's chlamydia, so gram negative, gene sustain. This is more in older patients, um, you know, more um, people in, engaging in sex or sexual activities and lower eyelids. Uh, for number four is dendritic ulcers. This is what you see with herpes, HSV keratitis. And please remember that you do not give steroids to these patients. Okay, it's contraindicated. It's just one of those questions that everyone loves to ask, so make sure you know this. And five is fluff balls in the vitreous humor. If you see fluff balls, they're actually fungal balls. Um, it's a candida albicans infection, uh, endophthalmitis. Okay, moving on to some pathology of the eye. So pause and then unpause when you're ready. Okay, associated with galactosemia, that has to be your cataracts, right? So go back to biochemistry. Cataracts, uh, we see lens opacification, increases with age, associated with degeneration of lens fibers. Number two, and you get like a cloudy vision. Okay, number two is acute angle closure glaucoma. Okay, so it's an acute angle closure uh, glaucoma, um, and this is a medical emergency. Okay, what uh, it causes basically, what are the causes? You have a closed angle, like the name suggests. It's an acute condition, and there's an angle closure problem. So, what are some things that will close the angle? Things like pupil dilation, you can get a thick iris, hypermetropia. Uh, metropria um, can cause give you a thick iris also uh, this is seen most commonly in Asians and the symptoms are um, eye pain blurred vision with halos headache and nausea and this is like we said medical emergency uh, let's compare this first to number six which is open angle glaucoma so an open angle glaucoma it's not an angle closure problem the angle is open however something is obstructing an angle okay so it's it's different um pathology with open angle glaucoma um this one we see you know what what would be obstructing so this is something we see if there is an uh, accumulation of rbcs in the angle or debris from some kind of a tumor that's um, accumulating in the um, in the angle, and uh, most common and uh, open angle glaucoma is the more commonly seen glaucoma. Okay, going to number three are optic neuritis. Optic neuritis is inflammation and demyelination of the optic nerve. Um, you know we can see this with autoimmune like multiple sclerosis or TB, syphilis, and even Lyme's. And we get blurring blindness and retrobulbar pain. That's pretty classical of optic neuritis. Retrobulbar behind the eye pain. And diabetes. Diabetes, like we already mentioned, there's the neovascular membrane growth. Um, and also this, uh, not only is there va new vessels in the retina, there's also vessels um, growing um, kind of by the iris, which can cause acute, uh, closed angle glaucoma. It can, you know, make the eye thicker and um, close the ang the angle. And then um, age-related macular degeneration. We've already seen the fundoscopy for this. We have the wet and the dry type. So this is where we see loss of the central vision, the fovea, the macula is affected, and this is seen in older age, so more than sixty-five. 
and I do have a note here please remember with glaucoma and um, remember glaucoma basically means increased pressure in the eye and because you're unable to drain that aqueous humor out right either it's a obstruction problem or maybe it's an angle problem whatever the reason is um, you're unable to drain the aqueous humor out there's higher pressure in the eye and more than 15 that's the number we're looking for so the glaucomatous optic nerve damage in, in glaucoma we get optic nerve damage and why so we see atrophy of optic nerve um, loss of ganglion cells which leads to thinning of the optic nerve fiber layer which eventually will lead to excavation or cupping of the optic disc so please remember that with glaucoma you will see excavation or cupping of the optic disc all right so just a few eyelet pictures I have for you guys. Um, try to identify these and like I said, pause and then unpause when you're ready. So this is a chalazion. This is a uh, cause is obstruction or rupture of the meibomian glands with accumulation of lipids. Now this is painless and this is more chronic. Compare this to this picture. This is a hordeolum. This is an infection of your eyelash follicle or sebaceous gland, what we call a sty. This is painful, this is acute, and really the treatment is, um, you know, hot compression. Okay, so this looks a little nasty, right? It's There's pus, there's crusting, it's red. Um, this is blepharitis, so hyperemic, flamic, flaking, crusting, inflammation of the eyelids. Okay. This looks like angioedema, this, you know, allergy, pseudoallergic, hereditary or idiopathic. Okay, um, so this one you can see, so try to guess and then unpause when you're ready. But this is an entropion where you can see the lower eyelid, it's rolling back onto the eye. So inward rolling of the eyelid and you can see the hair are actually going to scar the cornea uh, and this can lead to blindness. And this one is the opposite of an entropion. This is an ectropion, the outward rolling of the eyelid. This is benign, but may increase susceptibility to infections. All right, so that is all. Uh, and I will see you in the next video for our psychiatry module. Thank you guys.